Okay, it's time for another installment on the power supply project. As you know, on the last video, I was into the prototype uh, bit of the power supply, and uh, as you can see here, I've done about seven prototype. I just got four of the boards. I can see here, and uh, I done this to make sure that there's no oscillation, and you know, just uh, fix all the problems and issues I had with the power supply. And I'm glad to say that it's done. Uh, as you can see here, I had planned to make three channel power supply, and as you can see here, and that's the third one here. It's all connected. I was just testing uh, uh, this against the, with the oscilloscope and everything to make sure that everything is fine and there's no oscillation. And I'm glad to say that everything is working fine now. I can see here, get a close up view of the board. Can see, I'm quite happy with this. I think it's uh, it's quite nice. The whole uh, the whole board and the layout. I'm quite happy with the layout, and that's the behind of it. I'm just gonna explain what exactly is going on. So I got the power coming in from this section down there. I got my shunt resistor here. I got the differential ampl amplifier here for the current sense. I got the voltage regulator over here, and this is where the pass transistor will go for the voltage regulator. I've got the a relay here to turn the load on and off. Uh, this is my uh, output. So I got the ground, and I've got the positive here. Then this section down here is the 555 toggle switch. It's got its own voltage regulator, so it does not affect. The stability of the rest of the circuit down here and these are the control for it so i got the switch to, the to turn the uh, load on and off and i got the led to this to show that the load is on or off down here this section of the power supply is the voltage reference so it's got its own uh, voltage regulator here i got my voltage reference the ref01 here go through a precision uh, resistor divider to give me instead of 10 volt 5 volt that fits into an op amp to get buffered and then goes into a potentiometer and then the out of the potentiometer into another buffer and then goes to my voltage set and I've got the same thing for the current uh, so the 5 volt goes into another voltage divider and then down here gets into 1.6 volt gets buffered into the potentiometer into another buffer and into my current set pin down there as you can see here and this down here is where the constant current led, it, where I got the LED here to show me this goes into constant current or constant voltage. As you can see here, these blue resistors are my precision resistors. Down here, 0.01%. And I've got the chalks, or um, you can call them uh, uh, inductors, or whatever you want to call them, uh, feeding the voltages. The power to all the op amps so each op amp's got its own uh, chalk that you can see here and then what at the back i've got i've got at the power pin of all the op amps as you can see here i've got bypassing capacitors so the 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 inductors and the capacitor form an a filter to filter the power supply that comes in the power that comes into the op amps to just uh, take the edge off everything and just gives them a clean clean uh, power as you can see here, the important bit of the circuit where the uh, current is carrying, I've uh, just hindered so uh, it can handle the current. Uh, at one and a half amp, you don't really need to do this. Um, you know, the, the thick track on its own can handle the current, but I just, you know, I decided to do it just to make sure that you know everything's working fine. I got a few SMD uh, works at the bottom. As you can see, I got the 555 time uh, time achievement, some diodes and resistors. Then I got um, two uh, diodes over here, some bypassing capacitors, and both of the voltage regulators have their own uh, bypassing, as you can see down here, to just make everything work smooth. And um, I've decided to put the shunt resistor on a little standoff, because it does get uh, quite hot a bit, and I didn't want that heat to transfer into the PCB, because just right next to it I've got um, precision resistors for the current sense and stuff, so I didn't want that to interfere with anything else. As you can see here, only two jumpers, and these are for the voltage and current set. 
Cannon set. Um, I didn't want because they're, they're all down here. I didn't want the tracks to go all the way around and then come into to the you know to this section. So it was just better just to just put a normal uh, wire to them, make everything nice. And as you can see here, that's the second one, exactly identical. And I used the toner transfer to make the PCB. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. There's no broken tracks or anything around. So that's that, and uh, just get a bit into a bit of a theory of exactly what I've done. As you can see here. So if you go down here, as you know, originally I had the plan to use um, a LM series voltage uh, regulator for my output stage, and I had to ditch that because uh, I had issues with the current uh, handling of that and that taking into a zero volt when it was into constant current. So what I've decided, I've decided to make my own uh, voltage regulator. As, uh, as you know, inside the voltage regulator, you got a pass transistor, then you got the uh, op amp and few feedbacks and stuff like that, and some other circuitry for short circuits and uh, heat um, thermal protection and stuff like that, which I don't have here. So I've just got the basic. So what I've got for my pass transistors, I got two N thirty fifty five for the power transistor. Then I've got my OPA six two seven op amp. I've got some uh, feedback from the output state, uh, output of the transistor to the positive and the negative of the op amp, and I've got some uh, negative feedback as well. And uh, for the current setting of the whole uh, voltage regulator, I've got another transistor here, uh, and I've got a, a LED to the base of the transistor. So this, obviously, as you know, the voltage drop across the LED, a red LED, is 1.8 volts. So I've got um, 1.8 that translates into 1.8 amp so once I start pulling current from here uh, the LED is on and once it goes into constant current this turns off so it shows you that this is into constant current and um, I could you know I could have just take this off and just add another transistor and a potentiometer to set the current and I, I would be able to put the current even higher than 1.8 but I decided just to put a dial because you know LED because then that make that makes sure that my you know uh, I have indication of constant current as well instead of uh, making a whole other circuitry for the LED and display and stuff like that. Uh, this is very stable. I've tested this for a whole day against all kind of loads with my dummy load and different loads and it's very stable. Uh, I've got some bypassing caps here and there to you know to just uh, make sure it's stable and I did a lot of tests on this and this is the best design I've come up with and the stable design I come up with and this is what I've got in my power supply. This whole circuit is the output stage down here. And then I've got, the, as I said before, I had a pre-regulator. Uh, I found this circuit on the internet and just copied it around. Uh, basically what I've got here, I've got a Zener diode. And I've got a, a resistor here to set the current through the Zener diode. Then I've got a couple of transistors. I've got, again, I have the TUN3055 for the actual output stage of the uh, pre-regulator. Then I've got two other uh, transistors to just boost the voltage and the current and the uh, make sure this doesn't fall out of regulation. I've got some bypassing over here and I've got a resistor here to set the biasing for the uh, transistors here. Um, as you know, I'm feeding 20 volt into my pre-regulator. I'm getting about 15.3 volt out. Uh, this can handle up to two amp, no problem. It does not lose regulation, but once you go higher than two amp, uh, the water start dropping off and this goes out of regulation. Once it comes out of regulation, you do get a bit of an oscillation that the uh, whatever you know obviously your um, whatever oscillation you have from the front uh, passes to the end and uh, some other bit oscillation within the transistor so if you keep it under two, uh, 2 amp it's perfectly fine very stable and this is what I've used as you know my uh, my uh, uh, power supply goes only to one and a half amp so that's not an issue I got uh, 500 milliamp of uh, headroom for my actual power supply so this is the circuit that I've used in my power supply uh, for the voltage, uh, for the current sense, as you know, I explained before, I'm using a differential amplifier across a shunt resistor to measure the voltage drop and translate that into a current. And then I'm feeding that into another op amp to allow me to set whatever I want and it senses whatever is getting out of the resistor and then, you know, does whatever it does, op amp action, whatever it does to uh, allow, show me that if it's in constant current or constant voltage mode. Uh, these resistors, as I mentioned before, they need to be matched resistors. Uh, I'm using 0 
0.01% precision resistors, 29.9K. Uh, uh, I've chosen this value because this is what I have. So you can use any values you want uh, for whatever, you know, whatever um, project you're doing. Uh, this resistor is very important. It needs to be a, a good, you know, precision resistor. Unfortunately, I didn't have any. I've got, as you can hear, I've got, uh, I think these are 5%. So I've got 5% error on my uh, uh, current sensing, which is not a problem for me. As I said, I didn't want the current sense to be super precise. Uh, it's about 50 or 60 milliamp uh, error that which I get in my current, which is perfectly fine. It's adequate. I do not care about that. Um, so uh, forget that I've put 1%, I've got 5% on mine. And uh, this is how it is. I had to put a couple of bypassing capacitors here and there to make it stable. Uh, these circuits that you see here and the circuits that you saw previously, I've tested these against many different loads and uh, the way I've designed it, the way I've drawn it and here is my final circuit which I've implemented in my power supply because I've tested this and I've fixed all the oscillations and all the problem and all the values that I have here are here to set because I found that these values are uh, what I need to make this stable basically and that's that and uh, this is basically the whole circuit, so the whole two things put together. And this is the actual my power supply that you got here, minus this for instance, for, for a moment. This all here is the top bit of the power supply, and at the bottom here, what you got is the bottom bit of the power supply. So obviously I explained this, what it was, and this is my uh, voltage reference section of the power supply. So this is this section, so I've got my uh, 10 volt reference reference coming into a voltage divider. Uh, I've got the 212K precision resistors. That gives me a 5 volt down here. Uh, the 5 volt goes into a buffer and then into a 10 turn pot and to another buffer which gives me from 0 to 5 volt for VREF. That goes into my VREF set of the power supply. And then that 5 volt comes into another voltage divider. I've got 29.9 and 12.3K. That gives me 1.64 uh, or something in, my, uh, in the voltage divider. I'm feeding that into a uh, buffer and then that buffer goes into a turn turn pod again and then it could be buffered again and then that goes into my uh, current set as you can see here to set the current from 0 to 1.6 volt which translate into from 0 to 0 to uh, 1.6 amp and this circuit here is exactly what is done here I haven't drawn the the voltage regulator here because that I didn't need that so that's the whole circuit uh, and for the power supply that I was talking before that I was going to order a front panel from a German company and uh, I did a bit of uh, research on them and uh, they seem to be a bit expensive I mean a, a sing simple front panel for this power supply would have cost about 80 euros so this defeat the whole purpose of you know building something that you want to build for yourself if I wanted to pay 80 euros I would have bought the power supply with that price so what I've done I've ordered a plexiglass from a, a company within uh, inside the UK with the size of exactly the size of this uh, the five millimeter plexiglass and uh, they're tinted ones so what I've decided to do is uh, I'm just gonna make a couple of holes in the front for the uh, for the banana plugs and for the uh, rotary um, sorry for the potentiometers and for the actual display what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the plexiglass on its own and uh, as you know plexiglass is um, is see-through so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my uh, displays so my voltage and current displays at behind the plexiglass so the the obviously the display will show through the glass so i'll be able to read the voltage and the current through the glass but uh, because it's tinted you can't see the rest of the stuff so I, I think that that will be that makes it look i think good so i'm just wait uh, waiting to come i ordered the black one i ordered the red one and the tinted gray so i think which one uh, look nice on the power supply so that's what I've done so far. Uh, we're almost done on this project. Uh, as I said, uh, this is the, the boards are done. The boards are ready. So what, what next I need to do is I just mount the boards into the power supply and then just do the wiring and wait for the front panel to come and to finish it off. So uh, that's what I've done. And uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if anyone wanted the, uh, the circuit diagram and stuff like that, just uh, email me through YouTube and... Uh, uh, as I said, I used uh, my own uh, well, program that I mentioned before, so I don't know if that uh, uh, can export to Eagle or whatever program that you're using. So just email me and see what I can do. So thanks for watching. Until next video, goodbye.